Vortex works equally well for turn mill users. Designed for use with solid carbide tooling, it generates a tool path with a constant load on the tool. This is achieved by having a controlled engagement angle. This new strategy benefits the manufacturing process by creating a large reduction in machining time and improvement in tool life in comparison to, tra to traditional methods. It also maintains optimal cutting conditions throughout the process. If I come to my part view, we can see we have numerous pre-created features for this part. Now we're initially going to concentrate on the pockets on the face of the parts being machined, and we've used Vortex to machine both the large pocket and the small pocket at a greater depth. So let's preview these tool paths. So I'm going to run through a centerline simulation. So what we see initially is the ramp move into the stock. And we then see the tool using the vortex strategy, removing material from the pocket. We can then see the finished tool path like so. So let's simulate this with the machine simulation. So in some cases there may be significant unwanted movement on the machine and we can see how this manifests itself through simulation. So to machine the pockets on the face of this part we're currently using polar mode encompassing both movements of the X and C axis. However, what we can see is this gives rise to unwanted sharp changes in direction of the C axis. So I'm going to stop the simulation at this stage. So if the turn mill machine being programmed has the capability to use the Y axis the user should do so. And we can do this simply by coming into the strategy page and choosing the option of cutting the feature using Y axis coordinates. If I say apply and OK and repeat this for the smaller pocket, I can then rerun the machine simulation. So we can now solely see movements in the X and Y axis with the C axis lock. Additionally, Vortex works on diametric pockets. At the top we can see a pocket on the part. And this has been programmed again using the Vortex toolpath. So if we preview this running the centerline simulation. We can see the tool ramping into the material and subsequently removing material using the vortex strategy. And we can see the net shape of the tool path like so. So I'm now going to show how we can go about creating this type of pocket operation using the vortex tool path. So I'm just going to uncheck the current vortex toolpath for the pocket and reprogram this area. So the first thing I wish to do is come to the feature wizard. I'm going to select turn mill and choose a pocket operation and choose to extract with feature recognition. I'm going to specify the index axis as normal to the bottom pocket surface. I'm then going to use automatic feature recognition to automatically recognize the pocket. I can subsequently select it and say finish. Now at this stage I also wish to incorporate the chamfer. So I know the chamfer height is 0.25 millimeters and the depth of the pocket is 5 millimeters. So I can say apply. I'm simply going to change the location to 0.25 millimeters higher. 
if we then go to the strategy page I'm able to choose the type of step over that I wish to use. So I'm going to select vortex in this case and deselect the pass. In this case I have two roughing passes and if I wish to use only one I can simply come to my milling attributes for the roughing operation and select zero for my multiple roughing diameter. If I say apply I can see now I solely have one roughing operation. I can preview the toolpath created. Once again we have a ramp move into the stock material and the subsequent vortex toolpath to remove the stock. 